stress and the cortisol that's resulting from stress can be a really big hindrance on your wellness and weight loss goals. Whether your wellness goal is weight loss or hormone balance or gut healing, it's really important that you're taking a look at cortisol and helping to naturally balance that. Today I'm sharing with you guys my cortisol reducing morning routine and exactly what I do every day to help keep me balanced, start off on the right foot so that I can help to reduce my anxiety levels, help to tap into fat burning mechanisms and even get really great sleep that night as well. First, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition and human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science back and holistic methods that you can use in order to achieve your wellness dreams. So if you have a wellness goal in mind, make sure you subscribe. And I still have a little bit of the keto coffee left that I made this morning. So if you have yours right now and you're watching this, keto coffee cheers. Now the idea for this video started off because a few weeks ago, I sent out in my weekly newsletter, a semi-detailed description of my morning cortisol reducing routine. It is probably the most clicked email I've ever gotten before and so it's clearly something you guys are interested in. I think we all want to be able to not just start off on the right foot for stress purposes but also because there is this intimate relationship between cortisol and stress and belly fat and of course the relationship between cortisol and anxiety. So especially if you're having difficulties losing weight around the belly then it's really important that you're making sure that you're balancing your cortisol levels naturally. So I'm going to take you through my morning routine that I did this morning so feel free to take what works for you, leave out what doesn't, maybe add something else that works better for you. It's all about personalizing it to make sure that it fits you and your needs and your lifestyle. Now typically I wake up between 5.50 and 6 or 6.15 somewhere in that 30 minute range. And in order to reduce stress and decision making in the morning, I always lay out my clothes the night before. This might seem like something extremely simple and kind of silly, but it really does make a big difference because it helps to remove two big decisions right there in the morning. First of all, what you're going to wear, which I know can seem again a little silly, but it's just one more barrier that could cause that increased stress. And it helps to reaffirm that you're actually going to get outside or get your workout in by having your clothes out. Now the whole point of the morning routine is to help to make things as seamless as possible. That way you can focus on the tools that are actually going to help you to balance your cortisol levels and feel good going into the day. And this little tip really does make a big difference. Now the next part is my workout. So I do this first thing in the morning. Of course, I'll have a little bit of water before this as well, but I like to work out first thing because I found that it just helps to clear my mind, helps to make it so I get a little bit of energy out. Plus if you're using intermittent fasting and you're in that fasted state, even before the keto coffee, it really helps with those fat burning benefits too. So between 6.15 to 7.15 is usually when I'm working out. And this will typically consist first of a walk with Sophie and my fiance, Trevor. Depending on if we might have slept in just a little bit too late, we'll go on anywhere between a 20 to 40 minute walk before we get a strength training workout in. Although I have to say Sophie is not the most trained dog, our fault, <laughs> but the walk almost turns into a little sprint and hit workout for me because I have to keep up with Sophie who has a ton of energy. <laughs> and clearly is not very great on the leash. Plus another really great benefit of walking before you actually do a strength training workout, helps to warm up your muscles, helps to just make it so that your body's a little bit more ready to dive into that workout. I don't know about you guys, just going straight from bed to some type of strength training just feels off and I just feel like I'm never getting a great workout out of it. So I like to buffer it first with that morning walk, preferably outside, which you guys know is really important for helping to make sure that you can reduce those serum cortisol levels. But if it's dark and cold out, we'll also of course go to the gym and we'll get a little walk on the treadmill there if we can't get outside. The next part of this routine after that morning walk is a strength training. And lately I've been re-diving back into my 21 day intermittent fasting program workouts. I haven't done these in a while, so it's really been challenging for my muscles to reincorporate them. And it's been a nice change of pace. So today I did the upper body strength training workout. And the thing I do while I'm working out to put my mind in the right place to make sure that I'm feeling positive, which is a really important factor when it comes to decreasing serum cortisol levels as well. I'll listen to various motivational speeches while I'm working out. And I found this to be really great, really inspiring, just an amazing way to start your day. And it's something that you can absolutely 100% do for free. What I've been doing is typing in motivational speeches or best motivational speeches on YouTube, or even there's podcasts that have it as well. And usually they're about 10 to 30 minutes, even some are an hour or longer. So you can find ones on YouTube that work best for the timing that you're looking for for your workout. And when you're feeling inspired, it's hard to feel stress at the same time. So it's a good way to counterbalance out that stress or the cortisol. Now something new, but it's also kind of old that I've re-added back in is using meditation. Now, a couple years ago, I was using meditation really consistently when my anxiety was at a really all time high and it helped a lot. Then my anxiety improved and I wasn't using it as often. I didn't find the need to use it. I was able to use a lot of the tools and strategies I've learned from meditation in order to just help combat that daily anxiety. But recently there's so much going on in the world while simultaneously running my own business and other life factors 
pictures, like planning a wedding, <laughs> my anxiety has been quite a bit higher. So I've been really actively working toward those tools that I've used in the past to help reduce the anxiety level. Because of course, if anxiety is high, then cortisol is high. And that's the whole point of this video. We're trying to get that cortisol level balanced, which for anxiety purposes, but also for weight loss is hugely important because those elevated cortisol levels can lead to weight gain around the belly. So I've been diving into meditation immediately after my workout. I found it's a really great time for me. It's kind of a cool juxtaposition going from sweating and working out really hard to then immediately just sitting down, taking deep breaths. It's just been something I really like to follow immediately after my workout. I feel like it's the time my head is most clear and it's when I'm most able to actually use meditation. And personally, I really like using the app Headspace. It's what I used a couple years ago as well, really consistently. And it's where I learned a lot of those really great tools. So I've restarted back up on that. And I do about either 10 or 15 minutes of meditation immediately after my workout. Plus the deep breathing that I utilize when I'm meditating helps to stimulate the vagus nerve, which I've talked about a little bit in previous videos. Videos, the vagus nerve is really important for helping to stimulate that parasympathetic state, which is the exact opposite of fight or flight. So remember, fight or flight is when we release cortisol. Parasympathetic or rest and repair is the exact opposite of when cortisol is released. Your body is always sort of in a balance going back and forth between rest and repair and fight or flight. So by stimulating the vagus nerve through deep breathing, it helps to shift the body away from fight or flight mode and into that rest and repair, which is called the parasympathetic state. Now, before I get to making my coffee, again, keto coffee cheers if you have it on hand. And before I jump in the shower, I just get some of the tools ready for making my keto coffee so I can just help to make it so I'm not as rushed. So I'll do things like start boiling the water, get the coffee grounds going. And then once the water is boiled, I'll pour it into the French press so I can steep it while I'm taking a shower. And when I'm taking a shower, I play these positive affirmations that I recorded a couple weeks ago. I just recorded on my phone using the voice memos app. It's about four to five minutes long and it's just me repeating to myself the various positive affirmations that resonate with me. Just like with motivational speeches, it just helps to put your mind in that place where instead of feeling like you're rushed or, or in that state of fight or flight, it helps put you in that state of rest and repair and feel inspired for the day rather than feeling that stressed state. So while I'm taking a shower, I'll play that. And while that's going on, the coffee is brewing. So it's a nice way to just have everything line up so that I don't have to worry about time. So this brings me to around 7.45 AM or so, plus or minus 10 minutes, depending again on what time I wake up at. And this is where I make my keto coffee. This is a ritual I never miss. Clearly, especially if you guys watch me on Instagram, you see me post about this every single day. Having some type of ritual, like with a morning routine in general, but even if it's just one thing, like the ritual of making your coffee. That helps to make it feel like you've checked something off and like the morning is in order, which can really bring a lot to helping to reduce that cortisol level. Because if you feel like things are all over the place and you don't have order or you don't have rituals set in place for yourself, then it can feel a little bit like you're starting off with chaos, which will just immediately spike your cortisol levels. Not to mention, of course, I use mold-free purity coffee. It's the only brand that I feel like I can drink and trust myself because there are some coffees that do contain mold and mold toxins that go along with it, which can cause your body to feel more anxious and produce more of those cortisol levels. I've certainly noticed a difference if I am out or visiting my brother who lives up north a bit and we go to a local coffee shop and I take the first couple sips and I notice an immediate increase in my anxiety levels. I can have my purity keto coffee and it doesn't cause me any issues. So it's really about minimizing the potential causes of that increased cortisol and optimizing the things that can help to bring your body back to that state of rest and repair. If you're in the US and you want to test out purity coffee, because unfortunately I don't think that they sell outside of the US right now, I'll link them down in the description below. I even have a 10% off discount code that you guys can check out too. Now this last part from eight to 9 a.m. before I start work is extra important when it comes to reducing the cortisol levels for me. If you've been checking my Instagram stories lately, then you've noticed that I have what I call my education hour. And this is where I take the time to learn something or relearn something, or perhaps even just journal, or maybe a mixture of both. Recently, I've been going through one of my old biochemistry metabolism textbooks just to review the various pathways and mechanisms. But I found this to be something really important for me. It obviously for you, it doesn't have to be reviewing metabolism and biochemistry, but Perhaps it's something in your field or something you're interested in, just learning something first thing in the morning can just help to boost your confidence level, which in turn helps to lower the cortisol level as well. And then personally, right at 9 a.m., I make sure since I do work from home, I start work right at nine. And I notice that the days when I don't include this morning routine because perhaps I slept in way too much, 
I feel a lot more frantic and a lot more increased cortisol because there's something about having that morning routine and getting your ducks in a row first thing in the morning, starting off on that decreased stress level. There's something about that that just helps us seep into the rest of the day. So if you start off feeling stressed or overwhelmed, then that's going to seep into the rest of the day as well, which means that your cortisol levels are just going to stay elevated. And whether your goal is reduce anxiety or decrease belly fat, it's really important that we help to normalize that, bring it back down so your body can actually tap in a fat burning mechanism and of course have the stable mood and from here if you want to see what my typical day of eating looks like you can check out one of my more recent what i eat in a day videos right here also if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information make sure you subscribe right here i come out with new videos every tuesday and thursday all right guys keto coffee cheers and i'll see you in my next video